So we're in a pea field in Manitoba with Birdtail Outfitters. And uh, I've been wanting to come up here for years. I think this area is kind of under the radar for a lot of waterfall hunters. You hear Saskatchewan, you hear of Alberta, North Dakota, Arkansas, but uh, Manitoba just flies under the radar. But you look at, you know, there's so much water up here, lots of egg fields, and there's a pretty good migration of birds that come through here. So I definitely am excited to get up here and check this out. As far as I know, they're gonna come from the east and then they'll come over those, the road there and hopefully see us and just drop right in here. Sounds like a single. Coming straight in, guys. Get ready. Got him. How'd we do? Boy, that was pretty. Boy, we should have got a few more. You know, this area of Manitoba that we're in, we're kind of on the edge of the boreal forest and the prairie pothole. You know, it's kind of where the, where the two worlds meet. In this particular area, there's a lot of agriculture. You know, you're gonna see a lot of field peas, which the birds love. You're gonna see a lot of barley and wheat and you know, a lot of different crops that these birds will go into. You know, so for a lot of these birds that come from further north, you know, this area is one of the first areas that these birds get to, you know, where they get to feed on agriculture. And so it's really a unique, special area that really flies under the radar. I mean, a lot of times people think about going up to Canada, waterfall hunting, you know, a lot of them are heading to Saskatchewan, maybe Alberta. You know, those two provinces get a lot of attention. But there's a big swath through Manitoba where there's some incredible waterfall hunting. You know, whether it's Canada geese, you have your lessers and your graders. There's some snow geese that come through here. There are a lot of mallards. Plus you can hunt you know, more variety of ducks over water, especially your divers. There's a good sandhill crane migration that comes through here. It is just laid out well, not only for the birds, but it's also laid out well for hunting the birds. And since the fields are small, it's a little bit different situation than some place where I've been to where there's one refuge or there's one roost and all the birds are coming off of one location and they're going to feed in one big field that's another location. You know, it just seems like in this area, there's birds everywhere you look. I mean, when we're scouting whatever direction you look, it just seems like there's, there's clouds of birds, you know, and so it's a pretty special part of the world. Yeah, turn in again. Got him. <laughs> they came oh, in. Four, yeah. <laughs> Got four out of that bunch. <laughs> Never get tired of that. Those, those big geese and they coast. I love that. Kind of a neat system these guys have come up with. You know, everywhere you go, you learn something. And you know, A-frame blinds have become so popular. What these guys have done up here, they took it looks like some hog paneling where it lays flat, and they built a kind of a metal triangular frame that's got teeth that sticks into the ground, and then that way they can adjust it however but uh, really it looks like it's got a bunch of fast grass or straw you know zip tied to it then we put a bunch of grass over the top of it here this morning but yeah everywhere you go you learn something and you pick up another trick or tip you know and I think this is pretty ingenious what they've created here it doesn't take up very much room in the trailer oh behind us behind us Oh, right out in front. Four coming in real low. Get ready, guys. Yeah, crush him.
Cut him, cut him. Yeah. Nicely done, boys. Ooh, was that pretty, huh? <laughs> nice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Manitoba special there. Yeah. Look at that. This is a big old giant. That is a giant. Look at that. That is a big bird. Look at that. <laughs> Got wow. lots of down on it. Yeah. Well, I think running smaller spreads works because most guys, they tend to run the same rig setup, right? Like 120 decoys or more. They throw them all out, give them the kitchen sink every day. I like to switch it up like this morning. We had birds just coming in right on deck, right in the deeks, 20 yards. It seems to be working just running higher quality decoys, less of them, and just trying to be different than everybody else. <laughs> yeah, give them a go. All right, oh, hell, bang. that's a wrap. <laughs> Fun morning, huh, guys? Yeah. Fun morning. <laughs> Good job, guys. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that worked out awesome. It's kind of a Manitoba reunion up here. Resident hunters can shoot eight cannons, non residents can shoot five. I get up here, I see guys from Aikens Lake running to guys I've known for years. It seems like this is where everybody vacations. It has a resort in <laughs> Canada. <laughs> you, guys, you, you guys get done your busy season, you come hang out here. <laughs> I might, I might be more up here more often too. <laughs> Now, how many how many decoys do you figure you put out this morning? I think we put three dozen. Yeah, isn't that something? I mean, yeah. I, I think that's something that has to be said because I think so many people think, oh, I don't have a big trailer and I don't have all those decoys. But yeah. if you're in the right place, you don't need them. Yeah, if you're on the feed. They're coming here whether you're here or yeah, not. Yeah, you, you could probably get away with six well, or 12, I, you yeah. know? Like, and it might look more natural to them. Yeah. And then they'd, especially late in the season here, when they're starting to get a little bit decoy shy. Yeah, yeah. And then you get like, yeah, that looks like a bunch of motionless things, you yeah, know. Yeah, that's interesting. But, I, yeah, I think late season especially, less yeah. is more. Yeah, we usually dial her back quite a bit. Like a lot of times I'll just run a dozen and some sleeper shells and yeah. it works really well. What a great morning, huh? <laughs> There's just something about geese locked up with wings set I just never get tired of. No. How many years have you guys been coming up here? Fourth time. Fourth time. Yeah, I can see why. And you've been guiding for nine, nine years, Nine said? years, yeah. 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 What a special place. Yeah. It's the Manitoba prairies. You can see here we've got graders, we've got lessers. Look at the size difference between those two birds. That's fascinating to me. Tail of two extremes. But pretty neat, pretty neat bird. Well, after shooting a limit of Canada geese this morning, we're in a different field here. We're going to set up for ducks tonight. I don't know about you, but field hunting mallards is one of my favorite things to do. While we were hunting geese in the morning, our afternoon guide was scouting. And while we were hunting in the afternoon, our morning guide was scouting. And so it's just almost like you get to combine two trips or two hunts in each day. And so I'd never seen that before, you know, from a guided operation. You know, back in the day before I did television, you know, we, you know, I guided waterfall hunters for years. And uh, typically, you know, we hunted in the morning, scouted in the afternoon. If you didn't scout in the afternoon, you're kind of digging yourself in a hole for the following morning. And so the way these, guys are running kind of a cycle where they've always got somebody scouting, always have somebody hunting. It really <laughs> adds a lot of, of hunting to your trip, you know, and so 
I was really impressed by that, and I was really impressed by the, the guys that they had working out here. Really good people, very dependable, very personable. They're really addicted to waterfall hunting in a big way. You just tell that that's what they live for. Very passionate about it. Excellent callers, very strategic with decoy setups, very methodical, very articulate with their equipment. You know, they, you can just tell that you have to be a certain way to guide out of here. They like it right and tight and they've really put together a collection of top shelf guides and so really an impressive place. Mm, on the left here, it's coming. Two right over top, don't move guys. I'm gonna swing back around, get ready. <laughs> get ready guys, dead noon, right on top of the mojo. Kill them when you're ready, kill them. More. Nice shooting, boys. Back. Raj. Um, so that's good. We didn't have the majority of the birds roosting back here. We're safe. <laughs> that was the big test, the first volley. Heel. Good boy. Sit. Yeah, he's coming. Kennel. <laughs> Ready guys, right to left, same as the last one. Kill him. Nice shoot. Back. Good boy. Young pintail. Well, a good start, huh? These are working nice. <laughs> I take that all day. <laughs> Basically our hunt, we hunted a, a wheat field. Uh, you know, this time of year, birds are looking for, for calories to start their migration south. Earlier in the season, we're seeing them hit a lot of peas, high in protein, right? Um, which takes longer for them to digest, so sometimes they're not coming back to the, the pea fields in the afternoon so hard as they would like a wheat in the afternoon this time of year. With the cooler temperatures, the birds are, are needing that caloric intake uh, for their migration, for their flights, uh, and to maintain their en energy levels. Basically, birds will roost on water overnight. Uh, obviously, lots of sloughs around, small to big bodies of water, anywhere they feel safe. Uh, they're bumping out in the morning to get that intake and then back to the water midday to digest. They need that water to, for, the, for the digestion process and then back out to feed in the afternoons. Again, depending on temperatures, we saw we saw some warmer temperatures. Obviously, that didn't really affect our hunt, but it can in some, some instances where they're just not burning the calories to need to go back out and feed that second time in the same day. Get ready, we're gonna let them take the win. We're gonna get them all here in one shot. Three right, three straight out front. Get ready, guys. We're crossing three, right there on the right. Nice shot, right up top. Nice shot, back. They are working perfect. Yep. Heel. Five ducks out front. Go a little bit right to left. Get ready. Kill him. Go down, go down, go down. Yeah, we got four out of there. We got four out of the five. We got one way out here, one way out over there. Boy, they came in pretty, huh? Back. That straight dog out? Is a, yeah, straight out. Heel. That dog's impressive. Hey. Definitely has a nose on him. Heel. Nice work, your dog is impressive. You get that dog downwind of a duck and they, he doesn't have any troubles, does he? Just a nice mix of mallards. You can see some of these mallards are getting plumed out pretty good. Look at here. 
That's just a young green head here. And you ever wondering, look at the white. It doesn't ever go past the blue on a drake. Whereas you take a hen here, and the white goes past the blue. That's actually a young drake there. There's a young drake. Yeah, just a great, just a great day of duck hunting. Get ready guys, for dead noon. They're gonna turn over the mojo just like the last one. Come on, in front of the blind, there we go. Okay, we got one landed, three out. Try and circle back these three here. Um, so a lot of it's observation when it comes to calling, you know, how much those ducks are communicating between each other in that same field, whether it's during the scout or even in the potholes around you during that hunt. Uh, higher winds obviously require a louder call just to be heard at further distances. Um, you know, we're hunting our ducks over mostly honker spread, right, just to be visible and gives them the confidence to put down. Um, so throwing out the odd goose cluck just to bring their confidence level even a little bit higher. You know, you're, you're, very rarely will they be landing in a quiet flock of geese. You know, obviously as they're landing, there's no reason to call too hard. You know, quiet up on the call, a little bit of feeding chuckle just to maybe direct them a little bit closer to the blind as they're doing their final approach. Um, but I think a big mistake a lot of people make is just over calling. You know, you really don't need too much calling, especially for ducks. Okay guys, get ready on these five, they're coming. Kill them. <laughs> Two shells, three birds. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> nice shooting, boys. Back. The A-frame's obviously super comfortable. They're nice to hunt out of. Um, you know, you can spread your stuff out on the inside and not be worried about stuff being visible for the birds coming over. You know, we're, we're fortunate here in the pothole region, you know, with lots of sloughs, lots of tree lines, all sorts of cover to go and tuck those A-frames up against. For decoys when hunting out of an A-frame, you know, I like a, a, a nice bit of separation, 15, 20 yards. Um, I know some people like to hunt with decoys behind them. I'm not a huge fan of that. It attracts a little bit too much attention to the blind. Um, keep those decoys out front. That separation is key so they're not looking too much at the blind. It's, you're really trying to draw them to the edge of the field when you're, you're hunting that cover in the A-frame. So by side shooting, you know, you're, you're giving them that perspective that they're landing in the field. They're not landing towards the cover on the side of the field where, you know, not necessarily hunters are hiding, but predators as well, right? So give them that confidence to land, you know, close to the edges without having them look at that, that cover line. Get ready guys, I'm going to let them come down a bit more than they want in. Just let them swing, let's try and make them work. guys. Kill him. Right there, guys, take them. Back. Got a couple of them out of there. Yeah, they were a bit high. You know, so for us to go out and shoot a limit of geese in the morning, go out and shoot a limit of ducks in the afternoon, have all these things go right in a very short amount of time, is like the perfect, you know, you couldn't have asked for anything better. You know, it's like, how often does this happen? Well. 
probably quite a bit in this part of the world. This is a pretty special place. So, I mean, we've been to a lot of places, and I tell you what, this is one place that, wow, it's impressive. I mean, just some really top tier waterfall guides. If you're looking for an outfitter, per se, or looking for, you know, a guide, looking for a place where you can get your meals and everything's taken care of for you, maybe you don't have a lot of equipment, maybe you don't have a lot of time, you know, definitely a, an opportunity to look at, you know, or even for people that maybe always wanted to experience waterfall hunting, just never had a chance to do it, this would definitely spoil you. Really a, a, a great operation with some really great people.